At last, we have arrived at a point where we can start importing stuff into our Unreal Engine project. And when we can finally lock down the whole pipeline and really finish all the processes that are required, all the movements of files, etc., in order to get something from, you know, get nothing into in, into the engine. So when you, whenever you start from your uh, designer document and go all the way to the engine, once you have all your assets done. Now, uh, in order to properly uh, get this to work, I would like to first um, add a couple of stuff onto our uh, source control, version control. Uh, so as you can already see, I have my uh, Flintstone space open here, which is my workspace for the files. And if you, if you remember, we have added the .sp file, uh, sorry, .sp folder to our depot. In other words, the stuff that actually is version controlled. But realistically, we should also add the import folder over here. Now, let's take a look at the import folder. First of all, we've got the animations folder where we've, where we've exported all the uh, skeletal data, all the animations. So this is there's no mesh data in here. They're only frames, and you know these frames are mapped to a skeleton, which hopefully, if uh, you know we have a particular mesh here with a skeleton that is maps, uh, mapped to the mesh itself. We can just transfer that information over and you can just run it on anything, which is very great, a very excellent modular approach to you know how you create your assets and uh, then manage the, the library of assets that you have. However, as you can see, we've got the Maya switches here, sorry, swatches here, and uh, there's two ways we can uh, imp obviously uh, version control this. Now, the first and most obvious one would be to you know click on the import and simply say mark for add. And this will mark the folder for you know being added to the depot. Another option would be to let's say go ahead and um, you know just add the animations here and simply add all these files. However, the problem in this point will be at this point will be that we simply need like we won't be uh, grabbing these files. We're gonna have to keep adding them at the same time. Not to mention that we also have a file extension here called Asbin. Uh, you know, despite its ridiculous extension name, I guess it would stand for something like, I don't know what the A stands for, but it has to, one of the S's stands for substance and B probably stands for bake and IN stands for information. So this is essentially a bake information file, which speeds up consecutive bakes. If you are iterating over your bakes, let's say you have a particular setting for a normal map, you're not particularly happy with that setting for a normal map. And therefore you decide to, uh, Oh, I don't know, rebake it a couple of hundred times and see what's best. So this, these are just sort of cached, crunched up numbers. And th this can obviously safely be deleted, but you shouldn't be bothered with deleting this every single time you try to um, bake something out of it. Now, in this case, of course, um, because this file over here, we won't be, well, generally speaking, won't be importing directly into Painter but we'll be sending uh, you know, the mesh and all that stuff into Painter through the live link that, have, that is established between Unreal Engine 4 and Painter itself. We're really not gonna run into this problem, but I just wanted to go over you know, some of the ways in which we could actually um, you know, uh, you know, approach this, okay? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and simply, uh, well, I'm not gonna close this, just leave it as it is for now. And I'm going to add the import folder, all of the import folder into, um, you know, to the depot. So I'm going to go ahead, right click and say mark for add. And I will say I'll add this to the default change list over here. So as you can see, this is marked for being added. If I go ahead and take a look now at my um, workspace mappings here, we should be seeing, uh, we're not seeing it because it's not added. Okay, well, there, there, there's one uh, problem here, of course, now that we, we're gonna have to add this to the depot and then we're gonna have to demap it. Uh, another way to approach this would be to create a P4 um, uh, ignore file. So uh, you'd have like a P4 ignore dot, dot, dot TXT, essentially it would create a, a TXT file, place it in the root of your workspace. And uh, of, of course that file would have to ignore itself as well. Uh, but you know what, what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to, you know, remove these um, uh, marks. So let's say I'm going to revert this, I'm going to revert all of these really. Where's my revert? 
So I don't want to be adding these just yet. In fact, I will also revert the Maya swatches here. So there we go. I'm not going to be adding the Maya swatches. Now we'll be keeping the animations. The reason for this is because I simply want to be mapping this first before I start adding anything to it. So, so I only want to add really the folder itself. Okay. So uh, if we go ahead and submit this stuff now, let's say we just click over here and just we say, all right, we're done. Let's just submit. Uh, let's say over here we've uh, added the import folder to the um, depot map mappings and we have also upgraded the 2.4.15 version of the project because that's what we last time that's the uh, uh the last um unreal engine obviously version that we use in order to open our uh, software sorry our game here so upgrade the 4.15 version to 4.18.2 and that's really all that we need. I'm going to go ahead and say submit. It should be submitting fairly quickly. There's not a lot of data here. Once all this stuff is submitted, meaning that, of course, uh, as you can remember, since upgrading the, the project requires changing a lot of these assets, etc., updating the versions, it will kind of like repopulate the depot with all the files that we have in our project folder, such as here, for example, the levels and the starter content, all of that jazz. Is over here now since source control is enabled in um, in, uh, in Unreal we should see that all of these things are not currently active right we're just we have to check them out if we want to work with them again let's say I want to check this one out and I would check this out I was the recompile the shader since of course um, this is a, a brand new opening so it needs to recompile them and then if we go ahead into our import folder over here and now we simply check uh, what's the status of our, uh, where's my connection, of our workspace, you should see that our mappings are updated. And we've got the import folder, including the animations. Now in the import folder, we need to just go ahead and just check some, some stuff. Let's take a look at our, um, at our um, graph over here. First of all, we need to add um, sort of like a, uh, another folder for example we could add the Maya swatches or we want to eliminate uh, you know a type of folder for example that we don't don't want to be added all right in this case I'm just gonna right click on the import button and I will go to let's say uh, I'll include special in this case so let's say you want to include actually want to exclude special want to exclude special files and these special files will be with the uh, extension of dot aspen so I'm gonna say, well, I think in this case you don't need the dot. Yeah, this should be just fine. Let's just save this, and as you can see, we have excluded the anything. So the the the, the this star over here represents a wildcard. So anything that is named, any name of a file with the extension of an as bin, will not be uh, you know added to our. Uh, will not be basically version controlled, which is exactly what we want since if we start adding every Aspen here, every time we need to update a bake, we would need to check it out and then it would it'll be rebaked into it like if we got any like different sor sorts of information. So really, it's much better to just exclude it altogether. Now, if we decide to add the Maya swatches again, again, since the Maya is, since of course, uh, this is uh, kind of like, uh, um, kind of like uh, an extra directory, we haven't added it. But it's also possible to do that uh, by, let's say, clicking on the import and we can include special. And let's say we want to include a special, we can add an expression here, for example, to include or exclude. That's obviously the same thing, uh, the same uh, command over here. Uh, so in this case, we've excluded that. If we take a look here, we can actually obviously clear that stuff or we can include it. Um, let's say we're gonna exclude some, sorry. Uh, well, include, exclude, it's the same thing, right? Uh, as you can see over here is exactly the same um, uh, window here pop up now obviously you can use an expression and it really the, the expressions are fairly simple to understand right you've got uh, maybe you could use this for a directory write down a particular directory and then anything after that is fine um, actually no I think the express you'd have to go for the documentation I'm not entirely sure which syntax to use because there's two different syntaxes one is for ignore which requires you know these wild cards etc or you could use a uh, not sign uh, like a, uh, this 
um, this symbol over here in order to say, well, I don't want to include, you know, all files that are like whatever. Like let's say all DLL files will be excluded, stuff like that. But uh, generally speaking, the, the, the things available to you here is you know fairly simple. Files, as you can see, everything everything is excluded or included. Then you can set a specific file name. So anything that that matches this file name can be, and only that will be uh, included. And then you can use a file extension. And I believe with the expression, you can actually set a particular um, directory. Obviously, in this case, there's nothing to set since we don't have a, um, you know, like a thingy. We could always go over here and take a look at what we've got. Obviously, you can write here. Okay, now in this case, as you can see, the flying saucers in the depot is the same as the Flintstone space. Um, everything that is inside the Flintstone say, space will be mapped to the flying saucers. Of course, you could just, you know, write any extra stuff and just and it'll be added. And this is the same syntax over here if you want to be ignoring stuff. As you can see, uh, flying saucers, worms, volleyball import. Aspen, it will be denied, and obviously it's a part of the uh, Flintstone space. So you could say the same, maybe just start writing over here. Um, oops, start writing over here how you can, uh, let's say you want to go ahead and say flying spit, flying underscore sources, sources, and then you, you could go to slash and then add dot dot dot. Uh, well, sorry, my bad, what am I doing? Worms slash volleyball slash import slash dot Maya swatches oh you need a kind of like a, a negative sign here and then you obviously you do the same on the other side just press tab right and just say you know just basically write the same thing but with the uh, uh, your Flintstone space root now generally speaking uh, this is not necessary because I don't intend to be version controlling this in, this folder entirely at all. So there's really no reason for me to do that. And um, yes, I want to update that. And as you can see, we've updated the files. Now we can, let's say, try to add these, these four guys. And let's say I'm gonna mark for add. And this is not gonna get added. As you can see, the pluses are only on our low, the shitty low, which I should actually revert and probably delete. I'm gonna revert it because I don't like that. I don't like this particular version since it was just for an example. And then you've got the high and the low. Now, every time you export something from not from Maya that requires replacing this file, you're going to have to open this thing. And of course, you're going to have to check it out, then replace it, then check it back in. And same thing applies for adding. Now, this creates a little bit of a problem, of course, since if we don't exclude Maya swatches, we're going to have to, every time you right click and, and you know, mark for add, it will add Maya swatches here. So it's really up to you, but because we're not going to be having that many, um, well, that many, um, how should I say it? Uh, well, files and folders, this shouldn't be a problem. Now, let's say I'm done with my, um, you know, with my uh, stuff over here. So I'm just simply going to go ahead and, you know, submit this stuff. So added player and player. Um, high and low meshes um, uh, imported meshes maybe is better because you see Maya imported meshes ex external meshes there we go external imported meshes basically write down anything so that you can understand what the fuck is going on when you read this like half a year down the line all right, obviously there's a bunch of these different settings here. I think we went through them last time. By the way, you can um, you, you can change the way you want to do this. Maybe you want to revert them, but that's up to you. If you have loads of different settings here, you can just revert the whole thing. Then you can submit. So as you can see, everything is nice and done. Very, thing, very well controlled. The first revision, of course, version one. And then we've got version two of the worm underscore low dot SPP since we've worked on it twice now. Okay, now in this case, we actually want to delete this since, uh, well, we don't need it right now, okay? Since we, we haven't imported anything in our content folder, this is kind of redundant, all right? So I, I could just go ahead and say mark for delete, although the, this would not really delete it from the depot, you would have to go ahead using your P4, uh, P4 administrative um, you know, tool set and would have to obliterate it from the depot. So let's actually go ahead and do this right now since 
uh, I want to go and just finish with anything substance, anything perforce related, at least in terms of basic stuff, right? No streams, no, no extra custom tools or whatever. So let's go ahead and delete this. I'm going to mark this for delete. It will basically do that and it will be deleted. It won't be deleted from the depot, however, remember? Uh, so it just says that this has been deleted and you could obviously submit and it should say deleted worm underscore low due to redundancy obviously this is because we imported it into unreal didn't save the changes we made and you know that's that's the way it goes so i'm just gonna go ahead and simply submit this and it will now be gone now if we go ahead and take a look at our p4 admin you will quickly see that it actually isn't gone over here if this thing loads okay whatever uh Okay, there we go, there it is. So as you can see here, when we go to our depots, go to flying sauces, we've got our import animations. And where's the worm? Oh, sorry, my bad. Did it go to, was it in, oh, sorry, SP, there we, that's where it was. As you can see, it's currently sort of deleted at head revision, but it's still there and it's being kept. Now, obviously this bothers you. You could just go ahead and just, uh, obliterate the thing so you could just go ahead and obliterate it and this will ridiculous like this will delete the, the, the thing for good all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and obliterate it yes I want to obliterate the damn thing very well deleted the following excellent all the records are gone amazing stuff so that is essentially it now that you, you're basically done with uh, cleaning up your uh, uh, you know your your depot obviously like depending on the complexity of your uh, project, you might want to add a p4ignore. Like I said, it's just a dot p4ignore.txt and just add, you know, whatever it is you want. For example, you want to exclude a particular file set. And don't forget to add the p4ignore itself. Otherwise, you won't, you'll you have a versioned p4ignore, I believe, or maybe it won't even be added. Of course, you're going to have to go and open up your command line uh, and just say, you know, p4, uh, a p4 set, p4ignore, and then you're going to have to you're gonna have to, uh, you know, write down either like you're gonna either have to use like this, where it's just like home slash p4 dot dot p4 dot p4 ignore, and this would essentially add it as a p4 ignore. That's assuming, of course, if you have it, or you're gonna have to write down the whole, uh, you know, the whole um, path, the whole URL over here. So it'd be c, you know, slash slash oops, um, slash slash, and then whatever. Okay, of course you'd be using a different slash in this case. It would be like something like this, for example, if it was in the root of your folder, obviously if you have, depending on your drive. Now, again, like I said, this is really, really a little bit overkill for what we're doing. So I'm not really gonna bother with these things, especially when we come, when it comes to Maya swatches, etc. cetera. Um, so as you can see, we're pretty good to go. Now, obviously I can just add stuff, uh, mark for add, if I wanna add the whole thing, but generally speaking, I won't be doing that unless I have everything properly mapped out. And unless I'm working with more than just a couple of assets, I wouldn't bother, you know, changing these. But then you, you imagine if you had like a pack or maybe a level with loads of different, you know, assets in there, different like props and um, effects, etc. you'd want to be, it'd be hard to keep them uh, organized to see which one you can add, which one you, ha you don't have to add since of course, uh, they'd be organized in different folders, so you're gonna have to drill down in each and every one of them, okay? Uh, but in this case, of course, we can just, uh, you, you know, do this whole thing through the Unreal Engine. Now, now that we are here, we should go into the content and start our import process, therefore finishing this video with the final uh, note about importing stuff, okay? Um, obviously, the import folder is there only in for the source, for the version control, right? You, this is not, you, you don't see the stuff in the import. You actually have to import it in the engine from this folder, right? From this folder down into uh, the content folder because the only thing you generally see here is the content folder, all right? So let's go ahead and just do that. Now, obviously you can create some uh, assets here, for example, in terms of uh, physics, you could create a physics asset, which will allow you to ragdoll your stuff but obviously we're gonna go through this once we actually dive into the engine proper. But uh, whenever you have something such as, uh, where's my uh, skeletal asset? Well, no need for blend shapes. Uh, geez, there was an animation blueprint. No, where's my skeletal stuff? 
I think I forgot where the damn thing is. But essentially, uh, you will for animation to work in Unreal, you need a skeleton asset. And for some reason, I cannot find for the life of me where this asset is being created from. Uh, so I don't think you can actually create it from, from, from the right click. Is it? Is it? Yeah, no, it's gone. Uh, well, whatever. The point is that if you don't have one, it will be created for you. Now, exactly, you'll see exactly what I mean. So click the import button over here. We're going to import our worm underscore low dot FBX. This is the low FBX. Remember, we have it exported, prepared essentially for use in the engine. So I'm going to click open here and we will get our import options. Now, in the last video, I just glimpsed over them. Well, not in the last video before that. I just glimpsed over them really quick. It was like, ah, oh, yeah, we'll be fine. Now here, let's go over them properly. First of all, you've got the skeletal mesh. This essentially tells the uh, the engine that you've got a um, well, you got a skeleton on it. Obviously, if it's a static mesh, you're gonna get rid of this. I think that I believe this is automatically detected whenever you importing a mesh, so you shouldn't really have to set it or deset it every time. If you have a skeleton, if you have a skeleton, it will basically uh, import correctly. Sorry about that. It was my it was my uh, uh, my chair here. Um, so after that, you've got the mesh itself. So you could just import the skeletal mesh, for example, and not import the mesh itself. Although, you know, if, if you have a, like a specific skeleton, for example, then you need a skeleton asset. Now that it, this skeleton asset is different from the actual skeleton that you've created in Maya. This is like a, an Unreal Engine type deal. So as you can see, when leaving this to none, it will create a new skeleton. Um, however, when you're importing an animation animation only, you need to assign it to a particular skeleton. Obviously, in this case, if you have a skeleton from a previous asset, such, such as another humanoid, just select it over here, right? And it will be just fine. Now, there's some other stuff over here on the side. If I uh, simply increase this a little bit, maybe like so. Um, now, of course, you've got the, uh, you can update your skeleton reference poles, which will, I believe, over here, if you can use, you basically use, TO0A reference pose will essentially use the first frame as a pose instead of having your starter pose, okay? Um, then you've got the preserved smoothing groups, which is generally what you want. Uh, if you have meshes in your bone hierarchy, you can import them as well, you know, such as guns, etc., that are attached to bones. Um, you can import morph targets, that is assuming you have any blend shapes. The morph targets are essentially the blend shapes. If uh, as you as you should know by now that blend shapes are the um, deformers, you know, in uh, in Maya that allow you to create different expressions, etc. And they are keyable to animation, so you can import these morph targets. Uh, you should keep, uh, you shouldn't keep the overlapping surfaces unless you have several separated pieces. If they're not together, uh, obviously it depends on your mesh. I believe this is exactly the case. Yeah, just leave it as it is for now. Uh, if you have levels of detail, you will obviously import them as well. That is if you've decided to assign them in Maya. So let's say you created several subdivisions of the same object. Let's say you have a very simple object, which is like uh, 500 polygons. And then you got another level of detail, which adds a subdivision of one. A next level of, of detail adds a subdivision of two. But generally speaking, the engine does it on its own anyway, since it downscales and upscales meshes and textures compresses them depending on the distance from the camera so you know the only reason you might want to be importing lods like lod's is if you don't only, if you not only have your um, meshes hand done like handmade so let's say you actually upscaled them in terms of detail by hand and that at specific positions where you want them to be more detailed and not just subdivide because remember subdivision of course is is uh, universal it's not regional whereas if you keep if you start adding your own bevels and your own uh, little uh, um, so to speak uh, edges and edge loops over here and there you can actually get a much better result in terms of levels of detail of course by the you know for the best level of detail at the end you might just uh, subdivide the whole thing but then again you know it, it, you're gonna get a pretty severe impact so you can have as many as you want you can start you can have one or in this case zero which is the default uh, or you can have 10, 20, 30, like obviously you can set one up for as much as you can, but generally four or five is more than enough because there's only so much, you know, so much distance at which the, you know, the person can see. Uh, then you've got the normal import method. Method. Now you don't want to be computing the normal since we already have, we will be having the normals. Um, well, in this case, we actually can because we're not importing something with normals on it. But if we did, you wouldn't want to import them. You should import the normals and the tangents. Now remember, 
we exported it just with the smooth face and just triangulated. This is not a, um, like this isn't something that a painter is throwing at us. So you should be using the MIG-T space, which is the default default space that everybody uses. Well, at least between painter and Unreal. And then you should you should create a you, you could create a physics asset, but uh, I don't know. It, it might be it might be best idea not to since this allows you to ragdoll. But I'm gonna leave this on since. I, I think we had some ideas. I'm gonna have to go. We're gonna have to check the design document once we start the development process properly in, in terms of uh, coding, etc. In Unreal, but uh, I believe we were gonna create a dynamite ball that would explode and send the worms flying. I don't exactly remember what I had in mind, and that's why I have the damn you know the document here. So that's the idea. Uh, of course, you could uh, either either create one, or you, of course you can use one. Um, that being said, that's uh, this is the mesh aspect of it done now second of course you've got the animation however if you have exported an animation right in itself you shouldn't be importing the mesh right you should just import the animations of course you should import the um you know the skeletal mesh itself i believe you could actually import the animations without the skeleton as well i actually have to check that i'm not sure uh, we'll take a look at it after we start importing the animations now Importing animations is very simple, right? You click on this and you s just decide which, uh, you know, which range you have it. So that's when you need to use that. That's when the power of the uh, modular animation split, such as in this case where we have our animations being split into walk and jump, is powerful. Because currently, if you ask me how many frames, so in this case, let's say, um, let's say I want to use, uh, let's I want to set a range, okay, and this is the range that I want to be importing it. Of course, if you remember, I told you that uh, Unreal Engine can only accept one animation clip at a time, meaning that um, one FBX essentially needs to have one animation, in, like full animation. Otherwise, if you have, for example, a walk and a walk cycle and a jump, it means that you need to actually cut it apart inside the engine, and that's what you'd be doing. You'd be like, okay, I want to import from the frame number zero to frame number 30 or however many frames. So if you wanted to do that, you have to open up your, you know, your FBX file, take a look into Maya's, uh, you know, internal organs, so to speak, go into your uh, graph editor or time time uh, time slider, right? Or the range slider or whatever, and take a look at how many um, frames a particular cycle uses. So you're gonna have to write this down so it gets dissected. And then you're gonna have to import the same FBX again, but only with another with a with a bigger range. So let's say my first my walk cycle is between zero and thirty. My jump cycle is between you know let's say forty and and sixty. So my first import would be with a import range of zero to thirty. My second would be from forty to sixty. And I would get my both of my animations. You can imagine if you have a lot of animations for something like I don't know like an attack pattern, like a heavy attack, uh, heavy attack, light attack. Um, um, Maybe I don't know. Actually, heavy attack, light attack. Well, yeah, heavy, high, heavy, high, heavy, medium, heavy, heavy, low, light, high, light, medium, light, low, um, left side, right side. Right. If you start adding a lot of different uh, animations, you're gonna have a hell of a time importing them into Unreal. Then, of course, you've got the set material curve type. Uh, I'm pretty sure this allows you to change the. Actually, I have no idea what this does. So. You're gonna have to take a look at that for yourself, but generally speaking, you should be fine if you have this disabled. Um, after that, you've got the material curve surfaces, surfaces, which probably has to do with the upper bit. But since I have no clue what that is, like my guess would be that this is some kind of a you know rudimentary graph editor type deal. I don't know. Um, removing redundant keys, uh, redundant keys is almost always good since you don't want to be. Um, having empty frames in your uh, project then of course you you could delete the existing morph target cur target curves if you only want to import your skeleton animation so if let's say you're importing a whole human and uh, that human has you know a walk cycle a wink and a, and a smile and all that you could just import the walk cycle if you want to let's say use it for another uh, for another asset um, what is that? When I'm, what is that? I can't even read the damn thing. Okay, do not import curves with zero. Of a, yeah, that's good because uh, this is an empty curve again. There's really nothing here. So the redundant keys is just one key with a zero value. A curve is just several keys with zero values just running straight. So this is a, just a good cleanup sort of uh, you know regiment. Uh, after that, you've got the preserve local transform, which, um, well, 
basically it's like a it's kind of like if it's like kind of like as if you're running the animation in Maya. Generally, you should leave this off, but you know if you keep this on, you might have different results. Uh, of course, override animation name. There's really no point here. Uh, now, transform here will say say essentially what the transform uh, attributes are. You can change them, but generally speaking, you should leave them as zero since your uh, uh, your transform in Maya at export should be zero, and really you should be importing stuff at zero, especially after you've baked your pivot to a particular degree to a particular point um after you've got afterwards you've got the miscellaneous here which allows you to convert the scene um like if you let's say um if you use a let's say something like uh maya's default coordinate system and y was up instead of z this i think this could um you know uh this could actually fix that problem hopefully uh then you've got the Force front x axis, I believe that essentially transforms, uh, turns your, uh, um, um, you know, basically it's like the forward vector for your object. So it, it's like if you, if you have a gun and its barrel is facing in the x direction and the positive x direction, uh, whenever you just do some transforms, uh, it could end up in the positive y direction or in the negative x direction, or whatever. So this will essentially force it to be pointing towards the x axis. After, after this, you can convert the scene unit. If you have, I believe this is if you have a whole level here. Uh, oh no, sorry, that's my bad. <laughs> that's for centimeters. Uh, well, I think I think we set up Maya for centimeters, right? Did we? Yes, we did. So that's fine. There's, there's really no problem here. And then you can obviously override the full name. In terms of materials, you could, if you embedded the media in Maya at, at export, such as uh, when we didn't do that, by the way, since we didn't really do anything with materials in the first place in Maya, uh, we don't be we won't be importing anything. Of course, you can search different positions. You can actually, uh, let's say, decide to uh, search under a particular point in your FBX file. Of course, if you have multiple FBXs, and then of course you got you can actually set your own material here if you so desire in your imported mesh. Um, no need to import materials. No need to import textures in this case since we don't have any. Well, we could import materials actually, since we have a fong, uh, and but no textures. So this should import with a fong one material. Uh, that's assuming we did we embed the media. I, I don't think we did. So let's take a look at what happens with these particular settings. Did I miss anything in the mesh department here? Mm, no, no, we're we're actually pretty good to go. I believe there was another setting here, but about getting rid of triangles you know but for some reason i just don't see them see there used to be this thing where um look if you're importing something without a skeleton i think this might change if i just remove the skeleton yes okay so you can see if you're if you're importing just the uh the mesh itself now here we should have different stuff um so let's go over that as well obviously we're importing a skeleton mesh so we will you know click on this later down the line but for now imagine that you know we're not importing it and let's just say we want to import the uh the rest of, like just a regular static mesh such as let's say um let's say we want to import our net since the net has no skeleton on it it will be a fairly um well it will be a fairly uh, static mesh of course if we decide to change it to end cloth within the engine that's all right, but we need to first import it as a static mesh. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. First of all, you can auto generate the collision, which if you don't have any custom made collision, you definitely should auto generate that collision. Just to take a look at it doesn't mean that you're gonna get you're gonna have to use it. Most of the time, you'll you'll end up swapping it out for a um, for a more simplified version, such as a cube, a sphere, a capsule, or a tube, or or a combina or any combination of primitives just so that it can, uh, you know, it's not that heavy on the physics engine. Since, of course, if you generate collision automatically, it will use the topology of the of the mesh, so the geometry of the mesh, and you might end up with a lot of faces and with a lot of different shapes, which will require constant updates every tick of the game. Um, so only use, of course, only use auto-generate collision on, on uh, important bits with very highly irregular forms. Uh, then you've got the uh, LODs group. Of course, uh, we don't have any, and that's fine. Of course, you can see there's some default ones, such as high detail foliage, vista, etc., etc. But we're not going to be bothering bothering with that. Uh, then you've got your uh, vertex color import option. That is assuming you have any vertex colors painted in Maya, and you could actually use um, you know this drop down here to 
either replace or override vertex colors on another um, uh, similar mesh. Then here it is, remove degenerates. This is going to remove all the degenerate uh, triangles. That's assuming, of course, you did not clean up your mesh before uh, exporting in Maya. Of course, mesh cleanup is always important, so I recommend you run it every time before you're finished with the scene or with an asset before you export it. And then you've got the build adjacency buffer. This, I really have no idea what it is, but as you can see, it does something. Look, anything that is buffer speeds up uh, speeds up work uh, the workflow. However, uh, as you can see here, it's well, it's logical that larger meshes would take up a bigger buffer and therefore will require a longer time to, to tessellate. So tessellation, by the way, is just triangulation, so to speak. Uh, um, like for te it's basically it comes from texels, so it's kind of like uh, it's kind of look forget about it, just leave it on, all right? Unless of course you have a, you have a huge uh, mesh in terms of size. Uh, general light map UVs. That's that's uh, definitely cool. But by the way, the um, uh, what was this going to do? I forgot. I forgot what this is going to do. I just leave it on as well. Anyway, these 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 two should be on most of the time. Anyway, I forgot what this did, but it was something. Um, you know, it was just by, by basically it was another buffer, kind of like a ray, a ray or something. Uh, <clears throat> so then you've got the generate light map UVs. Now the light map UVs are basically kind of like um, kind of like the engine's own method of storing light data. Uh, since not all lights are um, calculated in real time, in order to save uh, you know performance, you can actually tell Unreal to bake the lights like in a light map, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So these are going to be these are going to be the UVs generated for that light map. Generally speaking, they'll be ex the exact same UVs you made yourself. Um, of course, you've got your one convex hull per UCX. Uh, now this what what this means is that if you have if you've made your custom um, collision in Maya, uh, you should know that that collision will be the form of a mesh, since you have to define a, sh define a shape, and this mesh will actually, uh, you know, be representable of that shape. In order for Unreal to read it as a collision file, in other words, uh, not import the actual geometry, well, not geometry, but just import the shape, the outline of the geometry, and not take in any polygons or any vertices or whatever. Well, there will be some, but uh, the point is that this will allow you to, if you have multiples of these, right? So you name them correctly in Maya because you need a specific naming convention. Like I said, you have to check in the documentation for the proper syntax in terms of the naming convention. But uh, most of the time it's just UCX underscore whatever, whatever, whatever. And uh, it's best if you have something fascinating, right? To create your own collisions within Maya since it all, all you need to do really in Maya is just to duplicate your file uh, your mesh, uh, scale it up by like a little bit, or maybe even nothing, and uh, you know, simplify it a lot, uh, and then uh, you know, rename it to a UCX underscore, and then whatever type of collider that would be, because you can import multiple types of colliders. And the one convex hull per UCX means that these co there's only one, um, like you have several, uh, basically several hulls. All right. Um, well, how should I say this? Generally speaking, you need to have a closed loop so it can fully contain 100% waterproof, watertight, whatever um, mesh, okay? You don't need to have any holes in it. If you have a hole in it, you might have a problem with this import. And generally speaking, if you have a hole in it, um, there's definitely gonna be issues in the long run if you don't uh, account for it later down the line, all right? Uh, so just leave it as it is for now since generally speaking, you will have one hole per UCX. Uh, since they will be pretty uniform. Of course, if you use several hulls, I think you have to disable this one uh, in order to you know, not get jaggedy edges. But if you're importing your collision and you don't get the desired result, simply disable it or slash enable it and see the, the, you know, the effects of your import. Uh, it might fix it or might break it. After that, you've, you're, after that, you've got combined meshes. Jesus, I'm starting to lose my, uh, my tongue here again. After you take a look at the... Uh, uh, Settings here. There's definitely quite a lot, but uh, the combined meshes essentially the combined meshes essentially allows you to take all these parts. Let's say you have, let's say you have a gun, okay, and you've broken it down. Again, I'm using guns a lot, uh, but let's say you've broken it down to your barrel, to your handle, to your uh, slide, to your uh, trigger, to your body, to this and this and this, in order for it to bake properly in Painter. Now, if you import this and 
make it as a single FBX file. If you send it to Baker, uh, sorry, if you send it to to Painter, <laughs> oh god, this is get, this is it. This is starting to get ridiculous. If you send it to Painter, uh, it won't have a reference to, through which to bake the normal map from the high poly mesh, which would have been dissected into these pieces. And whenever you've imported this low ver this uh, you know low poly version into Unreal, you would have essentially um, combined the mesh into a single FBX and then sent it to Painter. It would be like Dude, what the hell do you want me to do? There's really not that much um, stuff, of course. Uh, so that's basically it, all right? Uh, so this will combine your meshes into one, and uh, that's that. That might be a problem if you want to try to name, you know, try a different naming convention. Um, of course, if you have done this outside of Unreal, which is generally the best scenario. So generally speaking, you want to have your import folder over here. Uh, and in the import folder, you would work on your, by the way, you can delete these ass bins. So I'm just gonna delete this one. Um, so you could work in here for your, let's say, uh, you know, dissected uh, bake. And then you could simply uh, uh, import this as a single mesh. Of course you could, I think you could do that in the mesh editor anyway. So you shouldn't be combining these meshes unless you're pretty much 100% sure uh, you just forgot to do so in Maya and decided to combine in one go in, in Unreal. So let's say it would be, it's something like a level, for example, right? You've created a whole level in Maya with houses, doors, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, they're all separate meshes, but you've exported everything, like almost the whole scene, pretty much. And you can just combine the meshes into one mesh so you don't have it clogging up your uh, scene scene view over here. So, so scene hierarchy. Uh, that's what you would use it for. Now, the transfer vertex to absolute is basically like where you're uh, baked. I believe this is where you baked uh, transform is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just leave it as it is. The absolute is for the, like, relative to the uh, mm, transform node where you baked it, how your mesh will move. Then you've got your import mesh LODs. Of course, you need a you know proper designation in terms of the naming convention. But if you have some mesh LODs in Maya, so let's say you've exported ten versions of the same mesh, you could import those as well. Um, and then you've got your normal import method. Method, and if you have actually uh, if you've actually done any uh, painter work prior to importing, you should not. You should import the normals instead of computing them, and you should also import the normals and the tangents because uh, um, a painter will compute compute the tangents for it, and they share the same MIGT space. Then you've got the same transform, miscellaneous, and uh, you know, etc. In terms of um, uh, uh, what's its face, uh, in terms of uh, attributes here, which we can set parameters. Uh, the interesting bit here is the LOD settings because you can auto compute LOD distances and you can even say how many LODs you want. That is for bigger games, of course, but let's say you want five LODs and your minimum LOD number would be zero. So zero would be your zero would be your starting value. And then you can import uh, your material that, that will try to import a material assuming you have one. All right. Okay, uh, oof, that's quite a lot of uh, stuff to talk about, but you know, I'm surprised actually the import bit is so small. At the end of the day, though, if you got stuck, if you get stuck, just open the documentation. Just click over here; the documentation will open. You can go through all of the import settings. There's loads of different stuff there. There's just FBX pipelines for animation, for meshes, for um, you know, for um, materials, for basically anything really. So uh, definitely, you should do that. All right, let's just click import this stuff. And let's see what happens. Mesh geometry, uh, no name. Whatever, my heart, you know, that's fine. So whatever. Uh, but this should be working just fine. Now we've got the fong. So we've imported our fong, uh, which is our, um, you know, material, which I really think we should just delete. All right. Should we? Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's run, um, let's run Painter and see what Painter thinks if we send this to Painter without the fong one. I believe it should be just fine with the following, but if I delete it, let's take a look what happens. Let's take a look. I'm curious right now. I'm very curious. Uh, so that's, that's Painter running over here. So what we could do now is simply right click as usual. It could go into our, oh, where's my uh, Painter bit? Why do I not see the Painter? No, where's my, uh... Is my plugin enabled? Oh, for crying out loud, dude. Come on. Fine. 
Uh, yes, yeah, save selected. Clearly, we've imported all that stuff, so we should be just fine in terms of, uh, let's see if we have anything here removed. Content. Um, where, we, where did we put it? We put it in starter level, or what was it? No, I think it should be in just the content bit, right? Shouldn't really be an issue, but uh, let's just refresh and see what happens. There we go. Okay, so there, these are our assets. They're still, they're added for a mark. Okay, this is finally working. Uh, they're added for a mark, but we should check these out since we'll be, well, not these, but just these two. We will be, uh... oh, they're checked in. Okay, that's great. They're still checked out, right? We can send to Substance Painter now. That's that's fancy. So there it is. We got Substance Painter enabled, and we should have the stuff here, and it's using Fong 1, and the live link is performing correctly. Now, if I delete this, I believe we should run into an issue. Yes, excellent. So let's say uh, let's say I decide to force delete this. Now our worm is still working. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Let's let's try to send this again to Painter. See what happens. That's pretty cool. I didn't think uh, it would keep the texture set here, even though we deleted the uh, you know the the actual material. So that's that's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna basically get rid of this and I will save all that stuff well I need to make this writable uh, check out selected check out selected save all this and then we need to submit everything check in save selected and say ah imported the player character to the engine and simply click OK. Of course, if you want to keep working, you're going to keep the files checked out. Uh, all of these are being submitted. You can actually take a look at your message log, see what exactly we're doing here. As you can see, these are our uh, exclusions. So everything is working just as it's supposed to be working, as it just how it's supposed to be working anyway. Um, so yeah, there's, that's pretty much that, guys. I mean, there's not much else to say. After that, you just refresh, see what the story is. We're looking good. The warm, dial, warm underscore load at SPP, however, is not added. So let's say, oh, we need to add it. Now, you could go ahead and do that. But generally speaking, since you'll be working this on a fairly constant basis, you really don't have to. However, since this is, uh, you could set uh, perforce to automatically add stuff that is in the game folder. All right. So that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, I'm really not going to bother with this right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And I will also close this. And I will close the volleyball folder because we're now officially done with the journey from uh, from nothing to Unreal Engine 4. Technically speaking, we've we've uh, you know you have a full understanding of well uh, uh, of an average understanding of Maya. Uh, you have uh, an understanding how to hook up Maya with uh, Painter. You know you can understand how you can hook up Painter with Unreal, you can understand how to work with all three at the same time. Uh, and since the import folder provides like a very good spot to hook your, uh, ver uh, you know, version control there, you could also add, let's say, something like Mudbox into the mix for you on your own. Just check it out and there's loads of stuff on the internet and maybe get good results with it. Mm, so, um, yeah, definitely, definitely good stuff. And you have a sort of good understanding of how Painter works. Now, we may, it depends on what we're going to do next. Now, I'm not sure uh the format here but we're still not done we're still not done with painter because we still have our static meshes now i got two options here when it comes to the painter we can either use painter 2018 here or we could use designer 2018 to design the uh substance for our floor in other words the beach that we'll be using remember we actually made a beach so we could design a substance for the beach which is sort of properly uv'd it's not that bad it's just a single plane uh and then i wanted to show you the issues with the net because I made it specifically to be kind of shitty in terms of its UVs. It actually has pretty shitty UVs with huge texel density, very dense in terms of texels. And that's that's the opposite spe end of the spectrum. I wanted to show you basically, you know, how you, if you go too, de too much detail, how you could actually lose a lot of stuff, right? So just to put it this way. Now, that being said, in the next video, we'll most likely uh, work on this... Um, you know this player character here and just um 
you know paint the guy out now whether i'm going to be talking about it i'll do it in you know like a, you know speed paint it so to speak well speed i'm not very fast when it comes to working with this stuff since i'm kind of pedantic uh but i might speed it up just so that you're not bored and i will i think i've basically talked about most if not everything that i had to say about painter and from here on out, in terms of painter uh, education slash information, you should really go ahead and take a look at the documentation of Algorithmic or take a look at Wes's uh, tutorials. Um, and after that, of course, once we're done with the actual worm, I might, I might go over designer since it kind of overlaps in terms of how Unreal Engine 4 works. And then we'll be working with UE4 exclusively. All right. Uh, until, of course, we're done and, and you know put it up to Steam. All right, guys. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Uh,